Hey there, Uniservo here. This is finally the third of the recent donation videos. I've been having a hard time getting this one shot. The old phone here, the Samsung S5. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty ancient, isn't it? Keeps crashing on me and stopping recording without letting me know. And so, well, it's, it's a pain in the neck. <laughs> anyway... Donations of IBM parts, and from the title you can tell, transistors and lights. Useful things. So, yes, this came from an, uh, an ex-IBMer, and uh, he put out a thing, does anyone want this stuff? And I said, sure, I could use that. And uh, um, he, he donated it to me. I, I gave him the postage, and uh, um, here we go. And we've got a nice box full of pretty sorted stuff and um yeah i did paw through this a little bit but not in super super detail because well it's kind of fun to do sort of one of these unboxing that uh, you know youtube seems to like anyway let's take a look so ibm transistors like these <laughs> O28, what kind of number is that? Well, that's that's a scheme that IBM used during the early transistor days and realized that it was, oh, late 50s, I think it was, when um, Watson, the, the, the head man at IBM there, uh, put the decree out that IBM shall use transistors, no more tubes. And for the most part, that was followed. And so IBM... They basically had to figure out these new transistor things, and uh, they assigned engineers to to uh, both sample what the competition or what was available out there in, in industry, and also making their own transistors. Because, well, it's IBM. They like to turn anything into their own product, uh, you know, kind of like a, have a, an IBM factory, pour in dirt at one end, and out comes a computer. Uh, do it all yourself, IBM. Well, that was uh, that was the thinking in the in the late '50s and such like that. So uh, anyway, uh, IBM did make their own transistors. However, when they did do all the studying of what was out there, they more or less picked TI Texas Instruments to make a lot of their transistors. There were a few other people that they used, but mostly it was TI. And that, that lasted for a very long time, uh, that, that re relationship. And these indeed are, there. in fact, you can see, yep, good old TI. Um, now, 028, that was kind of a shorthand number that IBM used in transistors because, yeah, the, there was this long IBM number, probably six or seven digits long, but... Uh, the, 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 that's what you know the actual inventory people used but for the the engineers the field engineers they just gave like these shorthand numbers to IBM transistors this was IBM transistor type 28 and well they put a zero in front of it they got up to I don't know I want to say about 300 or so um, there's actually a listing of a lot of the types at the uh, computer history museum 1401 uh, restoration team some of their web pages has uh, listings of what these numbers are and um, kind of close equivalents so yes good stuff here stuff i can use this is all the kind of transistors that were common commonly used in in the uh, system 360 and into the 370 era um with these shorthand notations a lot of these are of course going to be germanium now i can see just from the rest of the box there are some some of the uh com competition samples from other vendors in here and we'll get to those but let's just take a look here uh what we have and everything seems nicely sorted and i thank you like here's uh some type 15s and type 86s and you can see yeah they're just kind of your standard top hat style transistors. But here, here it gets interesting. IBM 63 and 13. Note the interesting packages. Let's get a little closer here. These are actual real IBM made transistors. 
uh, very likely out of fish kill because I think that's where almost all that was was done. But yeah, there are these oval types, very distinctive packages. And from the writing, the orange writing, it kind of looks like these are probably were part of some test sample. Um, you know, maybe they were cooking these things, life tests, who knows. But yeah, you do find these, uh, these old transistors, uh, these old IBM oval types in some of their earlier transistor products. Uh, yeah, these were kind of a little out of favor by the time the 360 era came about. Well, let's keep going. Well, see here, these, these may have been competition they tried out. Um, these are international rectifier, TR06 and TR07. We have, going on here, T37, and I can tell you, yes, these are Philco's. Philco used T numbers, and here we can see, well, distinctive little bullet-shaped uh, transistors, nice gold, nice gold ones. And yes, IBM did use a little bit of Philco, a little bit, uh, because Philco, they made very good transistors for computers, very good. They're uh, surface barrier type, specifically. But T37s, and you can see they're, they're nice, nice examples there. Um, nice clean leads and gold. And of course, there's got to be some boring stuff, gaskets and heat sinks. <laughs> so, hurry for those. You need those every so often. A few more. IBM question mark. Looks like some uh, rectifiers in there. That's a TI with the heat sink there and the sticker. Aha, look at this. Transitron SX2004s. Look like all new. Transitron was uh, one of the bigger names that has now completely disappeared. Uh, I believe they were in Massachusetts. And also, I think that's <laughs> uh, a lot of polypacks. <laughs> no time to test was essentially Transitron garbage, I think. Um, <laughs> but yeah, look at these nice looking Transitron. Uh, transistors. Uh, Transiton did eventually get into the uh, integrated circuit field. Uh, not terribly popular though, and uh, I think in the 70s they were pretty much gone. Aha! These are the blinking lights. Finally! This is actually what I was really interested in initially. Uh, and you can see there aren't that many of them compared to how many transistors there are. But let's take a look at these because these things well, you should, you should find them and send them to me because they're hard to find. <laughs> now, let's get a focus there. You can see the black ones are uh, often called dial codes because that was one of the companies that, uh, that um, made a lot of them. It's sort of a trade name at this point, although these, these types of indicators are pretty much out of fashion, these two-pin little offset. But you see the clear... The clear cased ones, those are real IBM and they're very much similar but not quite. And the distinctive feature is the head. You can see the head is flatter than the dial codes. And the heads on the IBM ones come in various colors. White is the most common, but you do get red and green. Um, and they're getting very difficult to find. Dial codes, not so much, but you know, the Dialco ones, they're not, they're not the same. They're not the same. For one, they stick out like a sore thumb when you use them in an IBM blinking lights panel. They don't look right because of the head. But uh, there are some also some specification differences. So, yes, these, right there, that clear guy right there. Those are what I want. Those are the good things. IBM indicator lights. Okay, let's keep moving on through. We'll speed this up. Here we got some uh, some other oldies here, IBM numbered transistors. Yeah, the plastic bags are sort of making focusing hard. More transitrons, slightly different number, SX 2005 instead of 2004. Nice, nice examples too. Here's a bunch of uh, TIs, 063s. Now, 
one thing you might notice is we saw that number before. We both have 63s in here. Well, that's the TI version. That's the IBM version. They should be basically uh, the same specs. Moving on, we have, oh, oh here, here's the grab bag, question mark, IBM. And I can immediately see some interesting things in here. So let's, let's zoom up a little bit, as the camera can do. Well, that blue one right in the center of your screen, that sure looks like a Raytheon. Yeah, that bright blue that they used in the late 50s for CK uh, 722s and friends. Um, but we also have some other interesting things. GT, it looks like a general transistor right there in the center. Um, probably some unmarked ones. I don't know what some of these other blue ones are. There's a Philco there in the center of your screen right now. That's a, that was their standard bullet-sized uh, case. Let's flip it over. See what else is in here. I don't know what that green one is. That may just be painted green. Uh, IBM would often do that uh, for test samples. Oh, this one right here in the middle of the screen now. Um, uh, that, that says RCA, the brown one there. That very much looks like a... Let's see if I can flip this around. Yeah, look at that. It, that is actually a RCA developmental transistor a lab animal you know whether it's something really neat and special or if it's just you know production prototype i don't know um, might be able to look up that number so uh yeah this is a bag of goodies here see uh it looks like a another gt Oh, yeah, good stuff. I'll have to go through this exhaustively later. Um, you know, if I went through this exhaustively on the video right now, it would be like 45 minutes long. All right, 083s. That was a pretty common, pretty common one, uh, IBM transistor. 210s, 086s. Looks like new stock there. Those might be, those might be GEs. It's hard to say. But yeah, here are some classic GEs with the top hat and the little tip on the top. Very, uh, very distinctive. And in fact, you can see it says GE Miscellaneous. Then we have some paper bags here, and this says GT20, and that might mean general transistor. Sure enough, general transistors. They uh, they were one of the early companies that remains kind of forgotten it now. There you can see the logo there. Um, I don't know if that's 65 or 55. I don't know. But I believe they got absorbed into general instrument. Okay, more. Like I said, we're going to blow through these because a lot of these are just kind of standard, industry standard numbers. It's just that they've got these IBM code numbers on them and that's cool delco 21172 delco of course got into the transistor business because of the car radio business and tubes in car radios are that's kind of, gets kind of interesting transistors are so much better for car radios more ti just miscellaneous nice gold one some 13s. These look like more. Yeah, these are GEs. These have the funny, funny numbers that GE used for a while. These that were these were actually their better transistors when they had these kind of scrambled up looking numbers that were four J's and four D's and this, that, and the other thing. Uh, those tended to be their higher spec transistors. Uh, they also, of course, did make the 2N, the 2N stuff. But these were, these, with numbers like this, the GEs, those were, those were some of their better transistors. Here we got Philco's. Yep, Philco's with the T numbers, and you can see the bullet shapes. 
classic Philco, they were, they were quite big in the semiconductor industry. Here we have, uh, you know, some more, some more of those GEs with the uh, funny numbers. And yeah, you can look those numbers up. Got some uh, power transistors pulled, pulled out of board. So I don't know if these are good or not, but uh, yep. Big IBM ones, no doubt for power supplies. Now this is interesting. It's a little module. And I can see no maker number on it. But yeah, it's got that cordwood looking, looking design. Pulse transformer, a couple transistors. And yeah, look at that. It's got the welded construction. Very similar. Um, yeah, no, not soldered, welded. Very similar to what the uh, uh, AGC, the Apollo Guidance Computer on Curious Mark's channel, uh, how that was constructed. Very high reliability. Um, I guess this is one that didn't get finished, but I don't know what this was for. Maybe for spacecraft. May have been an IBM experiment. Uh, who knows? I don't know. If anyone knows, let me know. Yeah, we got more and more. Yeah, Here we have uh, some classic TIs. Classic oval TIs. And we're getting to the bottom here. Here, another paper bag, CTP. If I'm going to make a guess, I'm going to say cleavites. And there's one in here, and sure enough, it is a cleavite. Uh, that was originally a company called Transistor Products in the 50s that Cleavite purchased. And I want to say that Gould eventually bought them out. Uh, but another name you just don't hear about anymore. And a beautiful specimen. Yeah, look at that. Nice and, nice and shiny. One in for 541. Well, yeah, diodes. Oh, they're, they're relatively neat looking diodes. I don't know what that number is. If it's a Zener, if it's a crystal diode, I don't know. Selenium diodes. So, awfully small. So, these might be the type that are used in meters in bridges. You know, test equipment type. Yeah, yeah, those are the type you, you find... Um, you find in test equipment, not in power supplies, because obviously that can't take any power. Uh, okay, so got some precision resistors. CK822. Well, I don't know that number, but CK, that's screaming Raytheon, isn't it? Oh, look at that. Nice, nice blue Raytheons. I wonder what makes these special that they got a funny number. I have to look that up. But yeah. CK882. And why IBM had them, I don't know. Probably, oh, I spilled one. Probably because they were evaluating it. We're almost to the bottom here, and we'll wrap this video up here. MPS8520. Well, that's that's a modern part. We're, nah, we're not interested in the modern parts. CTP1032. Uh, I guess we're going to see another cleavite here. Yep. And uh, once again, very nice specimen. He's going the transistor collection. And if I need them for IBM stuff, I'll use them for IBM stuff. However, I don't think they actually ever used cleavites. Pilcos. That was another pretty uh, distinctive Philco can. Not really a top hat because the, the ridge is in the center. All right, nearly at the end. SB100, that's probably a Philco. That's probably a surface barrier type. And um, for the, yep, it's a Philco and fairly early one and fast. Those surface barrier transistors were fast. Much higher performance. It was a big, big breakthrough. Too bad it's not a new, new part, but hey, I'm not complaining. So yeah, and we got some, just some more IBM stuff like that. All right, well... Yep, just mostly more just IBM numbered things there. Okay, well, probably time to wrap this video up before uh, before things crash. <laughs> um, 
So yes, if you have something you'd like me to uh, make a video of and uh, donate, let me know. Let me know. Don't just send it. Let me know. Um, and I can make a video of it. I do thank the donor of these parts. I also, of course, want to thank my patrons because I do have a Patreon. It is kind of important for me right now because, well, because everything is on fire. Um, so, yes, if you want to become a patron, link in the description, as they say, a buck a month. Hey, that's great. Hey, if you even want to do five bucks a month, that's even better. Um, I, I'll, I can use every bit of it. So, okay. Hey, if you like the video, leave a like, comment, all that. Hey, yeah, especially comment uh, for some of you old, old transistor guys. And especially that interesting module type thing, if you guys know anything more about that. So, okay. Hope to hear from you in the comments. I shall talk to you later. Bye-bye.